dito ngayon ang casting couch is digital so this digital talent manager sorry let, let's just call them dtm digital talent managers what they do is that they try to lure young social media uh, creators into sending their pictures na kasama yung private parts so nandun so yun yung mga sinasabi nila sa kanilang mga stories okay these are credible stories so i don't have i don't have anything na ma, na the doubt ako sa kanilang mga kwento-kwento kasi wala naman silang wala na hindi naman na kailangan magsinungaling o mag-create ng stories ayan i think based on their stories i collaborated naman yung mga stories na nagko-private pa sila ng ibang pangalan na kasama nila sa sa agency na yon so yung casting couch is digital doon nagsisimula at itong managers nag a ng mga pictures and then after that magsiset ng appointment to test them or to probably titingnan kung papayag itong taong to so doon sa kwento ni Cancelario may sinasabi siya na uh, may promise yung bait okay the bait na papasikatin kita at kung jowa ko yung yung talent ko mas pa-prioritize ko so nandito yung tinatawag na na fraudulent machination so uh, dito magdi-discuss tayo ng kwento or some facts about rape and uh, statutory rape so rape is defined as a sexual assault violating a person's rights to uh, personal security and bodily integrity so uh, ang rape na commit in so many ways so touching of the private parts or inserting um, the offender inserting his penis into the victim's vagina or anal uh, or using object or finger okay, yung, yung kwento ni Cancelario na hinawakan siya nang fina-fundle siya so it's either papasok yun sa sexual harassment and rape okay yung pagpasok yung paggamit ng kamay ng fingers to touch kasi yung batas kasi natin pag titingnan mo yung definition ng rape under revised penal codes i'm not gonna show you the the definition here i'm just going by memory actually because i've been to law school so na nice study ko to kahit pa paano so uh, yung batas natin yung nakalagay doon vagina anal so insert inserting you know, the offender insert, inserting his penis uh, or any object or his fingers into into the victim's vagina or anal or any orifice so dun dun natin malalaman na itong mga object na to ay pwedeng gamitin para makakomit ng rapes it's not just actually or the consummation of the sexual act but yung paghawak pa lang ng, ng victim's private part pwede ng rape yun at saka rape can be committed by anyone so regardless of gender so it can be committed by man, woman bisexual, gay, trans etc and walang pinipila yung rape so it can a rape victim can be anyone um, same thing okay man, woman, bisexual, gay, lesbian etc trans woman so uh, pero ang batas natin mayroong tayong pinaprotektahan dito kasi mayroon tayong tinatawag tina- 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 ni statutory rape so rape of of uh, young people so maraming amendment na nangyari sa sa batas ng patungkol sa rape so na amend yan para pro- mas lalong maprotektahan yung mga vulnerable especially young people children etc women so for example um sure ko naman yung nangyari sa okay we're gonna go to that other story na- later on so rape in, in terms of lack of consent mm, na amend yan so i'm not really familiar with the whole you know stipulation in the in the in the, in the law but um uh, rape can be committed by the offender through the use of fti so fti uh force threat intimidation what we call the the fraudulent machination fraudulent machination and uh, abuse of grave abuse of authority by the offender over 
his or her employee or talent. So yun. So dun pa pa yung sinabi ko yung promise by the offender to papasikatin kita. Okay? Yung mga ganong klaseng mga banat na papasikatin kita kung ikaw magiging jowa ko. Okay? Mas mapa, mapaprioritize ka. Mas ma, mabibigyan ka ng maraming projects. So yun yung tinatawag na promise or bait. Okay? At since young people ang involved dito mga minors, so let's just say 16 years old and below, okay, madaling ma- maututumato. So dito pa pasok yung fraudulent machination. Bakit? Kasi ang rape ay hindi lang nangyayari sa pamagitan ng dahas. Yung FTI na tinatawag natin, Force Threat Intimidation. It can also be committed. It can, you know, you can commit rape or you can, you can uh, execute rape through the use of fraudulent machination so yung and yung grave grave abuse of authority kasi lalo na yung mayroon kang moral and pro- professional authority over your victim kagaya ng talent manager over the talent kagaya ng uh, sinasabihan mo siya na pag hindi ka papayag sa ganito paano yan so, bibigay ka yung project sa iba so yung mga ganong klaseng banat at dahil dito mayroon tayong batas na protektahan yung mga defenseless yung, yung mga vulnerable it's not just because the victim is young but his status and position na mas vulnerable sa, siya sa ganong klaseng uh, abuse of authority kasi dahil empleyado lang siya kasi dahil talent lang siya so ingat ingat sa mga talent managers na abusive kasi the law can be used against you So, dun, papasok tayo dun sa batas natin na na-amend din. Dati ang rape, uh, crime against chastity siya. So, what does it mean? So, which means that ang rape victim lang pwede mag-file ng rape case against his of, or her offender. So, um, pag na-rape ka dati, ikaw lang pwede mag-file ng rape case. So, pag dinirap mo yung case, binayaran ka ng ng rapist mo, patay na yung kaso. Pero dahil inamend na mga mababatas natin yung batas natin sa rape, naging crime against persons na siya. So, it means now that yung victim ng rape, kahit i-drop niya yung case dahil binayaran siya o binayaran ng pamilya niya, pwede pa rin tuloy-tuloy yung kaso kasi pwede mag-file anyone including the state, including the police authorities. Pwede tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung kaso kahit na-drop na yung kaso. Although, sa batas natin, pwede ma-extinguish yung crime against rape pag yung lalaki, ba, yung victim ay babae, pinakasalan niya yung babae. So, that's part of the law of the Philippines, so, of the lab. So, ngayon, punta tayo sa statutory rape. So, patungkol naman sa statutory rape, ito ay uh, crimes rape crime na na-commit sa isang bata minor below 12 years of age. So, uh, kinakwalify ng batas natin yung age patungkol sa rape. Papansin nyo, so, uh, rape can be committed against anyone. But, kung yung rape is committed against someone below 12 years old, that is called statutory rape. Kahit sinabi natin na ito, kahit sinabi natin Pumayag yung 12 years old and below, kapit na 11, 10, 9, 8, kahit pumayag yung bata na naggalawin siya, sabi na natin, ng isang mas nakakatanda sa kanya, yung, alam mo, talent manager. Okay? Rape pa rin yun. Matik ng rape yun. Kasi bakit? Because according to our lawmakers, it is the rational way of the law to make sure to defend the vulnerable. Kasi yung bata, A child below 12 years old doesn't have the intellectual capacity to think of the consequence of yung kung ano yung pinapasok niya, yung sexual intercourse with someone older than him or her, for example. Hindi niya alam yun. Kaya may tinatawag ni statutory, matik na. At again, the, the age of sexual consent in the Philippines, it's the lowest in Southeast Asia, is 12 years old. And I think our lawmakers are working to raise the age of sexual consent up to 16 years old. So, kin- kinatasan nila yung, yung 
age of sex well consent dito sa Pilipinas. So, alright, so there you go. Ang daming mga kwento-kwento, pero wala pa rin nangyayari, hindi natin alam. Like I said, anyone can file if rape has been consummated, for example, at mayroong nakakaalam na authority dito, pero ang pumasok ang authority, they can file a case against this person. So, 